uh, uh, let's call this a lemma, um, the, uh, the map from the carrier of a hyperplane to uh, x, uh, I'm not going to say anymore that x is, non is non-positively curved, it re they really all are non-positively curved, um, is a local isometry. Okay, so maybe that's a lemma, maybe that's an exercise, but you'll, you'll accept it. And the corollary is that the universal cover of the carrier, which is the carrier of the universal cover, Sorry, what's mean? Okay, as yesterday, or as two days ago, I see, there was a break yesterday. So, um, let V be an immersed hyperplane in a non-positively curved cube complex. Then its carrier maps to X by a local isometry. You can kind of believe that from the pictures, but you, know, require, you have to check. And, uh, well, I suppose, in particular, um, in particular, if x is simply connected, um, carriers uh, of hyperplanes of a cat zero cube complex, x tilde, are convex, right? There are convex subcomplexes. Okay, and in, and, and in particular, the concern that you might have had that maybe they that maybe you start somewhere and then you crash into yourself as you're wandering around through x tilde, that that concern is not is, is gone away, right? Because we could have defined a hyperplane in x tilde as an immersed hyperplane, those exist, right? You start off with x tilde, it has immersed hyperplanes inside, maybe they crash into themselves, who knows? Those immersed hyperplanes map to x tilde by a local isometry, this could have been x tilde right here, and local isometries are embeddings. So hyperplanes aren't going to crash into themselves, their carriers don't even touch themselves. <coughs> Okay, so that's, that's, that's how we know, or it's one of the ways of knowing that uh, hyperplanes exist. Is, is, is this local is, is, is knowing that um, uh, the carriers of immersed hyperplanes are local isometries, mapped to x by local isometries. Okay. Um, maybe uh, something that you might uh, consider, if you do have the carrier of a hyperplane, then you actually have various other convex subspaces. Um, in fact, this, which we sometimes call the frontier of the hyperplane, is convex, right? Because it's, it's convex inside of the carrier, right? And the carrier is convex in the whole thing, right? And actually, this shaded part is also, this shaded part is also convex, right? You can, it, that's the sort of, the, it, the, the, it's, it's bounded by this convex object, it's going to also have to be convex, right? Because you can't leave it and come back because that would violate the convexity of the yellow thing, okay? This is called a half space, or sometimes called a minor, a minor half space. Maybe I'll write that. A minor half space because there's also a larger half space which also is convex. Here's the larger half space. Right? And here's, the, here's the, the major half space, and here's the minor half space. They're both convex. Okay? And you can, you know, think of, th prove it by verifying that they're, they're mapping by local isometry, or it, it follows from, from other things that we've just discussed. Okay, so, in fact, uh, just to put things into perspective, um, well, <coughs> um, a subcomplex is convex if and only if it is, is 
the intersection of minor half spaces. So sort of just to put a little things into, into perspective over here. Okay, so that's what convexity can be interpreted in terms of minor half spaces. Um, and let's actually say, say something a little bit uh, um, uh, more fundamental about convexity now. Um, and it's the, it's the following statement. Um, uh, let, so this is now going more towards the world of, of groups. Uh, let, x tel, let, let x tilde be a delta hyperbolic ket zero cube complex. And let S be a kappa quasi-convex subspace. Tell me quasi-convexity was defined last week. Thank you so much. Then there exists R such that um, the intersection of half spaces, of minor half spaces containing S, let me, um, such that, let me write it over here, such that the whole of S, which is the, the sort of con combinatorial convex hull of S, which is the intersection of half spaces containing um, con containing S, I'll, 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 I'll explain that notation in a moment, is contained in the R neighborhood of S. So uh, let me explain that notation. So this over here is N is, is a carrier, right? It's short for N of a hyperplane. And this minor half space, I think I'd use the notation uh, for all of this this yellow part over here, I would call that n, n left, right? And maybe, I guess if you'd like, you can call uh, this part over here n right. But who's to say which is left and which is right? So I'll just write n, n left now. So if you look at all of the, at all of the half spaces which contain s and you take their intersection, um, that's the hull of S. That's actually contained in a small neighborhood of, of S. So the, so the picture is the following. We have, we have S, excuse me, yes, please? Do we know that um, two-sided? Excuse me? Do we know that hyper hyperplanes are two-sided? Yes. So um, uh, <coughs> once, once you know that the carrier, once you know that the carrier uh, um, embedded, right, and the carrier is this universal cover, right. From there, you could see that it's t that that it's two sided because if it were if 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 it were one sided, then there'd be a path in the carrier. The carrier is simply connected, of course, because it's living in, living inside. There'd be a path in the carrier that goes through the hyperplane and only touches it once, and so you, that would violate that it's simply connected because there'd be there'd be, there'd be a, cy a cycle in homology. Okay, thank you. Free space. Like, what if the whole thing's free spaces? Excuse me. <coughs> like, what if the the hyperplane carrier, all of it, like, like you, there's your space, and then the, it's like a free face of, of the cube complex. So there's like nothing. I didn't understand that. So we we will talk about it afterwards. Let me draw some pictures. I have so many things I need to tell you. Every time you guys ask me a question, you're losing things. So, it's. <laughs> It's, it's painful. It's painful to be here. Okay? So you can look. Here's S. And the picture is that we're looking at, we're looking at all of the half spaces that contain. Here's one of them. Here's another one. Here's another one. These are all the half spaces that contain it. You might have seen pictures like this somewhere before. <coughs> oh, 
right? And this is this this whole this whole object is contained inside the R neighborhood for some R. So um, here is my hull. I'll draw it in white. And that hull is, lies inside of the R neighborhood of S. Okay, so that's the, that's the picture that you should have in mind. Um, the idea of the proof is, 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 is somehow, I'm not going to explain it, but the idea of the proof is, is, is along the lines of, um, well, if you, if, 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 if you traveled out you know, more than R, then you could find a hyperplane which, which doesn't cross. It doesn't cross S. Right? So because of the hyperbolicity, if you, if you travel out far enough and you look at you know, a, a cube that, that's, that, that you're near, and you kind of, one of the mid cubes of that cube is going to give you a hyperplane which doesn't intersect S. And so, so any point that's sufficiently far out over here is going to be cut off from S by some hyperplane. That's, that's roughly the way the, the proof goes. Now the corollary of this is very, very important. Very important. It's critical. Let X be a compact, non-positively curved cube complex with pi 1 of X hyperbolic. Let H be a quasi-convex subgroup then there exists a local isometry from y to x um, with y compact and pi 1 of y mapping to h. So I'll just say equals h. Right, so you, what this is telling you is that if you ever have a quasi-convex subgroup of a hyperbolic group that is the fundamental group of a compact cube complex, you can represent that subgroup with a, with a non-positively curved cube complex. Okay? This is generalizing the idea. Right, so this generalizes, so generalizes our understanding of subgroups of the fundamental group of a bouquet of two circles. Right? Whenever you have a finitely generated subgroup of a fundamental group of two circles, That, 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 uh, that subgroup is represented by a, an, a combinatorial immersion of graphs. Okay, for those of you that have studied free groups, and you know, it's critical to understand this. This is the you know, main point in understanding their subgroups, is this idea that you can always, right, that, that you can always represent subgroups using a, a, an immersion of graphs. Right? Over there, it's quite easy because there are no squares around. So, so the existence of this is quite, is quite simple. You just look at, you look at the, the covering space, you look at the covering space associated to your subgroup, and you choose a finite, if it's finally generated, you can choose a little finite subgraph, which, which, which the whole covering space deformation retracts to. Right? And any immersion of graphs is a local isometry, so it's easy. Right? This, is, this, is just a, this is just the generalization of that idea, and it works quite nicely. And it's part of a theme where, you know, f freeness, gets replaced by hyperbolicity, um, graphs get re replaced by cube complexes. <coughs> oh, I'm still here. OK, so, oh, oh, it's painful. Let's, let's, cut, let's cut this, and maybe, maybe I'll get back to it. So it's kind of uh, Galois correspondence for local isometries, right? Uh, excuse me? It's kind of. Galois correspondence for local isometry. I don't know what Galois correspondence means. Okay, so 
It, it's you mean you mean a correspondence between subgroups and 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 uh, and, and covering maps? Yeah. No, it's not because uh, it's only for quasi-convex subgroups. Okay, so <coughs> um, let's now move to special cube complexes. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you now is about a a category of non-positively curved cube complexes that are um, that e even e even better uh, echo the nature of graphs. So graphs, we feel like we can understand their subgroup, the subgroups of their fundamental groups. So this is going to be uh, um, a certain non-positively curved com complex, non-positively curved cube complexes that are especially nice. So here goes a non-positively curved cube complex X is special. If um, each immersed hyperplane embeds and is two sided, um, doesn't self osculate. I have to tell you what that means, and um, and also and no two hyperplanes inter osculate because these have to be have, have to be uh, clarified. So uh, <coughs> um, I'm going to um, suggest what these you know what, what I'm going to draw pictures of what's not allowed to happen. So so. No pathologies, no pathologies of the following four types. Okay, now my pictures are, are going to be in two dimensions, um, but I think they, they get the point across. Uh, well, self crossing is not allowed, one sidedness is not allowed. A hyperplane cannot self osculate, and what that means is that it, um, uh, it's not allowed to come along right next to where it was. Okay, but we're very picky about what that means. Actually, we're a little careful uh, about it. Since, it's, since hyperplanes are two sided, we can do a convenient thing. We can uh, we can orient, direct all of the edges consistently. We don't have to worry about being well defined over here. Okay? And self osculation means that you can't have, me, me, uh, self osculation means uh, two edges at a zero cube which are dual to the same hyperplane. And are directed in the same way. They're directed. They're both directed outwards. Let's say. Okay, this is not allowed. And the other way is allowed. Well, the other way, if you change the orientation, it would be this way. So the two ways are exactly the same. So it's not allowed. Oh, I see. The other way. It, w this is allowed. Ah, uh, I can draw it properly. This is okay. I don't want to draw things that are allowed here, but I'm going to say okay over here. Okay, that's what you're asking about, correct? Yeah, excellent. So, um, interosculation is the following. It's a pair of hyperplanes that cross each other mm -hmm. 
they cross each other in one spot, and then they osculate with each other without crossing at another vertex. Okay, this is, this is interosculation. This is self-osculation. This is interosculation. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So um, the, key, the key thing that matters is the idea that there's no square over there. Okay, so the key thing is that um, even though they are dual to one cubes, which, even though they're dual to one cubes at this zero cube, they, they, don't, they don't cross the same square at this zero cube. Okay? So interosculation says that there's a square over here, but there's no square over here. I'm going to draw that square, but it's not there, so I'm going to draw it in purple so it's hard to see. No square. Because what would happen if there were a square over there? They would cross over there. Because they would both enter that square on two different one cubes right over there, and then they would cross. Okay, the way when Frederick Haglund, uh, with whom uh, we cooked up this, this definition many years ago, uh, at the beginning, we would remember it by saying, crossing pair has a square. Okay? That's me, because Frederick remembers everything after one time, and I have to make little, little rhymes for everything to remember stuff. So, <coughs> um, and what, this is, looks, looks similar to so, something we discussed earlier, doesn't it? The further, the furthermore. The furthermore is somehow related to this. Okay. Um, these are very um, artificial looking definitions, I, I, I hope you agree. I mean, that they, are, they certainly are. They, were, they came out of nowhere for us. Um, let me give some, uh, l l l l let me mention, so at least I'll mention an exercise. I, I should give an example, I'll give one in a moment. Um, uh, so among our exercises, uh, um, if x is contained in the product of two graphs, then x is special. Okay, so now at least you know that we're not talking about the empty set over here, right? Um, any graph is special. Um, well, also an exercise, the Salvetti complex of a, of a, of a rag is special. Now I understand I'm supposed to call them right-angled tits groups. Yeah? Okay. So, um, and actually, a cat zero cube complex is special. Let's stop for a moment. I'm not going to prove it in its entirety, but let's stop for a moment and think about the, this, this statement over here that a cat zero cube complex is special. Well, hyperplanes aren't, um, don't self cross, right? We, we've already dealt with that. And um, actually, you know, they're, 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 they're two-sided. The, are, are the, ca the carriers look like products, right? And they don't self-osculate. Those carriers embedded, okay? Um, they don't even have your other, the other type of osculation that you thought of, right? Um, and they don't inter-osculate. That's because of the, it's because of the furthermore statement. I'm not going to spend more time on this, but it's because of the furthermore statement that if, if, the, if um, that they can't, Interosculate. All right. Um, and then, uh, well, we, we cooked up the notion of a special cube complex for a different purpose, but uh, fairly quickly we found the following, and that purpose I will tell you about in, in, in a little while, it will be our focal point. Uh, we found the following that a cube complex is special if and only if. There exists a local isometry um, from x 
to R, where R is a Salvetti complex. of some graph. Okay, so, and actually, this, um, this is, turns out to be easy. Um, was, it, it was very strange for us when, uh, you know, we didn't believe it at first. Well, so, um, this direction holds because um, pathologies project to pathologies, okay. namely, um, uh, well, a if you believe that a Salvetti complex is special, right? And I, I, you know that uh, that's an exercise to do that. Okay, it's the, the hyperplanes aren't so aren't so big. Things are pretty small. There's just one zero cube, so it's 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 handleable. Um, well, if you have a pathology in X like a self-crossing hyperplane, it would project to a self-crossing hyperplane in R, but R, R is special, so that can't happen. Likewise, the other pathologies pr project under a local isometry. Um, in this direction, I will tell you that um, uh, the most important thing is that the graph gamma Right? So if x is special, we're, we're going to create a local isometry from x to um, a Salvetti complex. And which Salvetti complex? Because right? there's, you know, there's one for every simplicial graph. So let's first notice what, which graph we're going to use. We use what's called the crossing graph. The hyperplanes, uh, uh, the, let's call it the crossing graph, okay, gamma has, has a vertex for each hyperplane and an edge joins uh, vertices whose hyperplanes whose associated hyperplanes cross. So um, maybe I'll qu quickly uh, draw a, a picture to get, a, get an example going over here. Um, Okay, so this is a, a cube complex with uh, six, seven, eight, nine squares over here. Okay, nine squares. Don't tell me I got that. I got that wrong. Um, and it's actually um, it's special, right? You can check that it's special. This is special. Okay, there's a there's a bunch of things you need to you need to check all the right, but certainly you check that the hyperplanes don't self cross, right? And you see that they're two sided. You, nobody sees any self-osculation, and I promise there's no interosculation. Okay, that's the way the proofs go. Um, uh, what, what is this gamma? Let's, let's try to, let's, let's try to um, suggest gamma. So um, uh, maybe I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it like this. So there's an orange hyperplane. I'm going to run out of colors. Um, but everybody see that orange hyperplane? Well, I can, I, I can draw um, edges a, a, a dual to it, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to mark them and direct them. OK, so instead of drawing the orange hyperplane, I can just draw a bunch of edges labeled by 
you know, single arrow that are all dual to it. And let's, let's do that for the other hyperplanes as well, because this is going to tell us um, everything over here. Um, so there's this hyperplane here, right? And it's a sort of double triangle. <coughs> and there's this single solid triangle as well. And then there's this triple solid triangle. And then I've got my, I've got my hyperplane, which is dual to the triple arrows. Uh, and that's it. And then, huh? No? One, one more. One more. I don't. S I'm having trouble seeing it. Who sees another one? <laughs> the three cube has one, two, three, four. There's, all, there's one three cube over there. Let me, let, you guys can tell me, you, you'll correct me. And, oh, oh, you mean one more of these? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, I didn't finish that. So the, the, the goal, I guess the, the goal of these sorts of lectures is to get people to the point where they're correcting you frequently. <laughs> so we're almost there. Um, so there are all the hyperplanes, and now we might as well uh, I recognize gamma. Um, so the I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to draw it orange. It's draw, 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 drawn white over here. But one, one, one arrow crosses two, two and three cro cro hyperplanes, two and three cross, hyperplanes one and three, <coughs> hyperplane one crosses with double triangle, and hyperplane one crosses with, with, with single triangle. Okay, so this is gamma. I also have a triple solid triangle that I left out, and thank you, um, and it's right over here. Thank you very much. All right, so here's x, and here's r of gamma. You know, I, I'm, I'm, r of gamma looks something like this, et cetera. Here's its one skeleton. <coughs> and then it has a bunch of squares, and it has a three cube as well. Right, that's, that's the one skeleton of our gamma. Now, everybody sees a map from the one skeleton of x to the one skeleton of, of, of r because the, 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 the way that I've directed and labeled the edges determines a map, <coughs> right? You just send each edge to the, to, to, to the corresponding labeled edge, and you know exactly what, what direction to use. And, well, whenever... Whenever you have a square over here, that means those hyperplanes, that whenever you have a square over here, that means the corresponding hyperplanes cross, which means that you're going to have a square to map it to. So every square has a square to map to over here. And whenever you have a, 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 actually an n cube, it means all n of those hyperplanes cross. So if you have an n cube over here, it knows it, it, there's a place for it to map to over there. And actually, this ends up being a, a, a local isometry. So, um, you know, what we, we, we used, uh, for instance, two-sidedness to, 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 to know that we can direct things consistently. Um, the, the, um, the, the, the fact that it's a, uh, that the fact that it's an, a, a local injection, the fact that it's a local injection is going is, is, uh, um, is to need as well that the, uh, um, uh, that the hyperplanes don't uh, self-cross and that they don't self-osculate, okay? And, and then the, 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 idea that, um, uh, the, the, the idea that there are no missing squares, right, which is what we need to make sure that it's a local isometry, that's actually going to follow from the interosculation. Okay? 
So this is you know, something that can be worked through. It takes a, takes a little while to think it through, but it's, all, it's really that simple. Okay, and I've kind of sketched out the main point is to sort of realize what the map is. Now, what's the corollary of this? Uh, yes, what's your question? You mean that x is compact here? Nope. Excuse me? If x is non compact, y is gamma finite. It's not. Why is it finite? Uh, uh, so it's already complex even for ethnic cross. Sure. There's a lot of people out there that want their cube complexes to be compact. We saw a wonderful one yesterday, no, two days ago. She, she's not here anymore, right? Uh, otherwise, she would have been complaining. Um, in fact, I actually have to warn you all that um, geometric group theorists love compact things because um, cause then they feel secure that they have control. Right, everybody? You're all control freaks, <laughs> right? But the, but the reality is that um, compactness is not, is not natural. It isn't always the right thing. For if you're studying finally, you know, if you're studying finally presented groups and you want to have control, the control actually, you, the control actually comes from other, uh, other elements. Um, you usually, um, we're going to see what they are tomorrow. Okay, so if you want, you want to, you, tomorrow we will, we will see. Okay, but compactness is we 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 don't necessarily want compactness. Although we will take it if you can give me compactness, I'll take it. I love it. Okay, but we we don't need it though. If there, are okay, so. Oh, um, am I 35 minutes over or I have another 25 minutes? You have another 25 minutes. Yeah, that was a good way I did it, right? So, um, what's the fantastic corollary that we can state? Um, if x is special, then Pi one of x embeds in a rag, right? So, right? We we have we have our local isometry from x to this Salvetti complex. The fundamental group of the Salvetti complex is this right-angled Artin group, which is a very trivial-looking group, right? A bunch of generators, and some of them commute. Okay, so. If you manage to find a cube complex that is special, that cube complex, its fundamental group is somewhat reasonable. It's at least a subgroup of something that you might understand. Okay, so this is uh, this turns out to be uh, um, uh, uh, so s special cube complexes. Form a form a bridge from, from, you know, from some type of uh, combinatorial geometry world to a kind of combinatorial group theory. Because Right angled Artin groups, they're, they would, they're the sorts of groups that would make combinatorial group theorists happy. You don't even need geometric group theory to a certain extent. You don't really even need geometric group theory to understand them. Okay, you could just you know, mess around with letters. Okay. So, uh, um, life isn't so easy though. Um, uh, well, um, unfortunately, uh, we, we end up getting led to worrying about virtual specialness. We end up with a, with a question because we might, we might find a non-positively curved cube complex. I'm going to show you how to, where they come from <coughs> tomorrow. Okay, you, you can make them by hand, which is great, but they actually, sh they actually show up in a, in, in, in for, for other natural reasons. And your cube complex is probably not going to be special because what? it'll surely have some pathologies. I mean, self-crossing happens very quickly. If you're just randomly gluing cubes together, forget it. You already have some self-crossing. Forget about the non-positive curvature. Okay? Even if it's non-positively curved, you'll probably have some self-crossing. So um, w one is led, though, to try to understand vir virtual specialness. And there was, was a long, you know, exploration to uh, under, understanding this for the last uh, uh, almost 20 years 
now, which, which culminated in, in, in Eagle uh, proving that if X is compact and, and pi 1 of X is hyperbolic, then X has a finite cover that is special, is virtually special. Okay, so it, X has a, this, this, this cube complex whose fundamental group is hyperbolic, has a finite cover, probably a very big finite cover, but a finite cover which, which lives, who's, which shows you that this finite index subgroup lives in a right angled Artin group. And it answers many, many questions about that hyperbolic group. Because right angled Artin groups are linear, they live in SLNZ, they are orderable, they have all sorts of lovely properties. Okay, so this, this teaches us many, many things about an, a, a, a very, very large class of groups. And this, it turns out that the, the hyperbolic groups that are fundamental groups of non-positively curved cube complexes are, are quite common. Okay, and you can, one could argue that most of them are, right? At least when there aren't that many relations, most of them are. When you have many, many relations, and I, 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 I have, I've been guilty of not, not saying this, when you have many, many uh, relations, then you, you, you likely have property T, and, and which I'm not going to talk about, and property T um, uh, um, uh, is mutually exclusive with cube complexes. So a, a group with property T is not the fundamental group of a cube complex. Unless, unless the group is trivial. Okay. All right. So where did this notion of special cube complex come from? Right. Because I told you, even though uh, we were very excited that if it's special, then it, it it lives in the rag because you know it's being special is actually it's easier to just define special this way, not that way. That was a hard way to define. It was a strange way. Um, where did this notion of special come from? So let me, let, let me explain. Um, so there's something that we call canonical completion and retraction. And I'm just going to uh, suggest it. So there's the following theorem about uh, uh, special cube complexes. Let y to x be a local isometry um, with y compact and x special. There exists um, a finite cover. finite covering space of x, I will use the offensive notation um, such that y lifts to this what we call canonical completion. Um, moreover, there exists a retraction from this covering space to y. Okay, so I, I'm remiss. Let me draw the, uh, a little bit of a picture, a diagram of what's happening. So you start with a local isometry and the theorem says that there's a finite covering space of X such that the local isometry from Y to X actually lifts to an embedding and not only that there's a retraction 
back to this, to this Im Im embedding of y. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to explain this for cubes, but I'm going to explain this for graphs in a way that um, I hope will take everybody along and you'll know what exactly what sort of thing we're talking about over here. So, excuse me? Do you assume that the spaces are, are connected? Um, well, uh, um, it, is, it, it is assumed, but uh, it's, it's, it's true. Um, uh, it's, it's true. Uh, the the non-connected, uh, um, let's see. The non, I think that the, yeah, I mean, the, the, the non-connected case follows from the connected case. But assume that they're connected, so we don't have to talk about that. Okay, so let's, um, by the way, I appreciated that you came and asked me to, uh, to check the, tr the trivial, trivial cases. I, uh, um, John Stallings did that, used to do that to me whenever I told him anything, and uh, um, I do it to other people, so uh, you sh we should all do it to each other all the time. <laughs> so here's a, a lemma that a right angled Artin group um, is residually finite. Well, there's various ways of proving this. Um, um, well, what is re residually finite? Residually finite means, everybody knows what that means? Yes, every, every element, every non-trivial element survives in a non, in, in a, in, it survives in a finite quotient. What I can tell you is that 20 years ago, you had to say what that meant every time you gave a talk at a group theory conference. So the world's changed a little bit. It's kind of pulled, all, pull, we pulled it along over in this direction, which is nice. Um, so why are right angled Artin groups residually finite? Well, um, uh, w one, one way of proving it, you could prove it in, in many ways. Um, one way of proving it is that right angled Artin groups are subgroups of Coxeter groups. They're subgroups of right angled Coxeter groups, actually. And right angled Coxeter groups, I think, are widely known to be, to, to be um, uh, linear. Okay? And linear groups, finally generated linear groups, are residually finite. So that's, that's one of the explanations. Um, and then another lemma is that a retract of a residually finite group is separable. Um, so what does separable mean? It mean uh, uh, well, H, a subgroup H of G is separable. Um, if, uh, um, well, uh, um, H is equal to the intersection of finite index subgroups. Of G, probably infinitely many finite index subgroups of G. Um, uh, for those of you that prefer, you can, you, you can put the profinite uh, topology on G, and this just means that H is closed in the profinite topology. Okay? Residual finiteness means the profinite topology on G is, that's the topology given by a, a basis of cosets of finite index subgroups, that that topology is Hausdorff. Okay, so this is, this is a, um, this is a, f uh, uh, this is a fun lemma. It's kind of uh, one way to, there's various ways to prove it. One way is, is uh, I guess, um, retracts of Hausdorff topological spaces are closed. Okay, that would be, that's, what how, that's how it fits into things. Okay, but, um, so uh, I, 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 I mentioned these two, though, in order to um, uh, observe uh, a corollary uh, of, this, of this theorem. So we get the corollary that pi 1 of y is separable in 
pi 1 of the canonical of, of, of this covering space and hence in the slightly larger group pi 1 of x. So if you're, if you're separable in, in a finite index subgroup then you're separable in the whole group. Okay? And you're separable in this finite index subgroup because you're a retract of it. Okay, so, so this, this theorem, th this theorem about retractions and covering spaces w is really aimed at understanding separability, right? But being a retract is, of course, a bit better. So let's uh, state one more corollary before we get, uh, before I sketch the, what this theorem looks like. So that corollary, just to make things a little bit real and to connect to connect up together with what I mentioned, with what I mentioned before, um, when x is special, and uh, and um, pi one of x is hyperbolic, and h um, is uh, is quasi-convex, then H is a virtual retract and hence separable, right? Is a virtual retract and hence separable. And all, all you're doing is saying, okay, I have a quasi-convex subgroup. That means that I could find a local isometry, right? If I have this, I have this special cube complex, let's say, and and okay, it's, it's compact and, 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 and its fundamental group is hyperbolic. I have a quasi-convex subgroup H, so I could find a, a compact cube complex Y and a local isometry from Y to X such that H is just pi 1 of Y. And now um, I then, I, I, I then uh, say, okay, well now I have a local isometry from Y to X, right? I want to study Y by thinking about, by, by thinking about this local isometry. Um, which is a really a much better way to think about the subgroup. It's a much you have real good control over everything, and I pass to a um, I, I, I pass to a, I'm able to pass to a, to a finite covering space of X, so so that Y is a is a retract of that finite covering space, and and, and so then I so then I see that um, my quasi-convex subgroup is actually separable. Okay, so there's a nice interplay over here with between the 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 the, the geometry and, and and certain combinatorics that are. Um, that, that, are hap that, that, that we have sort of working for us and it, and it, it you know, once we're, it, 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 it leads to nice algebraic results. So let's, let's now um, draw a picture that explains what this canonical, uh, what this canonical completion it, um, is about. Um, and the best way to explain it is, um, is, is to explain it in the case of a graph. So, Ah, this whole blackboard over here. Maybe I'll still use this one. Um, so here's a here's a graph. Um, let's call this X. And I'm going to choose a, um, a local isometry from capital Y to X. So. And a local isometry is so easy over here, it's, it's just a, a combinatorial immersion. Okay, so that's a nice, that's a nice local isometry. Right, I'm, I'm going to be creating this commutative diagram here. So now I'm going to draw my canonical <coughs> completion which is going to be this covering space of X. So um, in fact um, we said that Y is going to embed in this covering space so we might as well build the covering space around Y. Okay, 
Here it is. And to create a, a covering space, what I need to do is I, make, I need to make this map into a local isomorphism, right? a covering space of complexes. A, 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 a combinatorial map of complexes is a covering space if it's a local isomorphism. Right? And that's quite simple. I just need to, to, get, to, to get the right number of incoming and outgoing edges of each type at each vertex. And there's many ways of doing it. Right? You could just, whenever you see a missing outgoing A edge, you can pair it up with a missing incoming A edge. Right? And you know, you're on your way. Right? You just add more and more missing stuff until, un, 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 until, you're, un, un, until, you're, uh, un, until you've created a covering space. Okay? So there are many ways of doing this. But we're going to have a, a canonical, we're going to choose a kind of canonical way of doing it. So let me, let me describe that, that canonical way. I mean, this idea of you know, embedding it in a finite cover really goes back to Marshall Hall in the, like 1950 or so. So what you do is you... Um, when you have that m missing outgoing A edge, you're going to connect it up with a very particular missing incoming A edge. And how did I, how did I choose that? I kind of, I, what I did is I looked at a, a maximal A arc, and then I closed it up. So let's, let's repeat that process. Here's a maximal, um, here's a maximal B arc right over here, and I'll, I'll close that up. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll make this a, a little bit more interesting. Let's make this a little more interesting. Now there's a little more stuff on it. So here's a, where, so where's my next orange edge that you might want to put? So here's a maximal B arc right over here, and I'll close it up. Okay, let me, let me finish it now on my own. So there's some trivial A arcs that you might not have noticed. And here's a, um, here's a trivial B arc. Here's another one. Do I have a finite covering space? Not yet. I'm missing over here. And I'm missing over here. And I'm missing over here. I'm good now, right? Otherwise, there'd be a riot. Yeah? So. What's, now there's many, a, a, a graph retracts onto any connected subgraph. Right? So we're, nothing to fear over here. There'll be no problem retracting it. But, but what's the canonical retraction that we will use? Well, what you do is you, is, is you map the new, each new edge to the arc that it was associated to. That's the canonical completion. That's the canonical retraction. Okay, I won't, I won't fill in the rest. And as it turns out, this procedure, um, uh, which I was using around 1994-5, uh, 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 Frederick and I uh, generalized it uh, around 2002 or so. It, it works quite naturally. When, you, when, when x is a Salvetti complex instead of when x is a graph. It's almost the same recipe. Okay? You, don't need to, you don't actually need to know what the recipe is, but you get, you, you get, this, you get this conclusion. And there are, there are features that the canonical retraction has that allow you to have a lot of control when you're doing certain elaborate arguments that are required uh, working, with, uh, uh, working with special cube complexes. There's now quite a, quite a bit of a theory of special cube complexes and groups which are, which are special. And they seem to, a group is special if it's the fundamental group of a special cube complex. And they occupy a kind of nice, nice, little, nice little spot where you can, where you can understand a lot, of, a, a lot of things about them. Um, I'm not going to say uh, uh, more about them. Uh, um, I finished on time. That means I, you, give, you guys give me an extra five minutes tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs>